Hello, this is Robert Cockfield with Get Up Community Center, Get Up Ministries. And today, um, I want to talk about transitions. And what I mean by transitions, I'm talking about from a uh, spiritual, natural implication of how that life will carve and craft us and allow us to have to look at who we are and where we are and where we're supposed to go. Are we um, stuck where we are or have we made the necessary assessments of the changes that need to be made in order for us to fit the season we're in and to be prepared for the next season? And so uh, we'll be coming from Isaiah 42, 10 through the 43rd chapter, 28th verse, and then Luke 16, 16th chapter, 1 through 17, 17th chapter, 10th verse, and then Job, the ninth chapter, 25 through 35. So I want to start off with uh, this. So life is marked by seasons and times of great difficulty and times of great joy. So I want you to think about what I just said. We find ourselves um, either it's a joyous occasion or it's one of great difficulty. And usually we focus on making the transition from pain, which pain produces purpose. Throughout the Bible, you will see that. And the pain that uh, we are to experience helps us or pushes us to move or to be stuck in a groove. Remember that. It's either going to be either going to be frozen or we're going to move forward. And the bigger issue is we're trying to relieve pain as quickly as possible. Um, but in the process, we may forget the significance of the transition itself. So let me go back. So, you know, before I read this passage of scripture, I just want to lay a foundation in the context of um, in the process of this pain and this difficulty, we just want to move quickly. We just want to get it over with. But we forget the significance of the transition itself. In other words, we forget really the opportunity we have and the rationale and reasoning for why we ourselves in this particular season are supposed to move forward or maybe a time of rest in order to be hibernation, prepare for the next season. But in any, uh, any way, there, there has to be a transition and the season has changed. So a transition is an opportunity to contemplate, think about that, to contemplate, to think about why we're doing what we're doing, how we're doing it, where we're doing it, when, so the who, what, where, when, and why. Who is acting to move us from one season of our lives to the next. And why does winter give way to spring? Like we're gonna talk about, you know, it, these right now we're in, we're in, we're in the fall, uh, autumn, and then, then, then winter comes, right? Um, things shed away, they fall off, leaves do. Uh, uh, certain species of plant die. And then it comes back. Uh, certain animals hibernate. There's a transition, you know. Um, certain um, places, spaces and places have bodies of water that were free flowing, but then they end up freezing. Our life is the same. The pain behind this shedding or this, this, uh, uh, having to morph or to do something different can either be joyous or it can be painful. So I'm going to start reading Isaiah the 42nd chapter, 10th verse through the 43rd chapter, 28th verse. So here's my servant who I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He Second verse says he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. 
third verse says, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. And in faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth, and his teaching the islands will put their hope. Fifth verse says, is this is what God, the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out. Who spreads out the earth with all the springs from it? Who gives breath to its people? and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Seven verse says to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being. I announce them to you. And this 10th verse says, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. 12 verse says, let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal with a shout. He will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time, I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I pant. 15 verse says, and I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and drop the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But 17 verse says, but those who trust in idols, who say to images, You're, you are our gods, will be turn back in utter shame. And 18 verse says, hear you deaf, look, you blind and see, who is blind but my servant? And deaf like the messenger I send, who is blind like the one in covenant with me, blind like the servant of the Lord. You will have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. If please, it please the Lord for the sake of his righteousness, to make his law great and glorious. But this a people plundered and looted, all of them trapped in pits or hidden away in prisons. They have become plunder with no one to rescue them. They have been made loot with no one to say, send them back. And the 23rd verse says, which of you will listen to this or pay close attention in time to come? Who handed Jacob over to become loot and Israel to the plunderers? What is, was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? For they would not follow his ways. They did not obey his law. So he poured out on them his burning anger, the violence of war. It enveloped them in flames, yet they did not understand. It consumed them, but they did not take it to heart. So now I'm going to go to... Uh, the uh, 43rd chapter, and I'm going to read to the 28th verse. But now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through uh, the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Third verse says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and, and Sable in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I'll bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. 
And the seventh verse says, Every, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made, lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf, all the nations gathered together and the people assembled, which of their God foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things. Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, and my servant who I have chosen so that you may know and believe me. And I understand that I am he before me. No God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I even I am the Lord and apart from me, there is no savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. 13 verse says, yes, and from ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reserve it? The 14th verse says, this is what the Lord says. Your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in ships which they took pride. And I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel, creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out chariots and horses, the army and reinforcement together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That's the key. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That's that 18th verse. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it is. it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, and they may proclaim my praise. 22nd verse says, you have not called on me, Jacob. You have not worried me, worried yourself for me, Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not bur burdened you with the grain offerings, nor worried you with the demands for incense. You have not brought any frag, 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 uh, fragrant calamus for me or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins and worried me with your offenses. I, even I, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence, your first father's sin. Those I sent teach you rebelled against me. So I disgrace the dignitaries of your temple. I consign Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. Now, again, transitions. So there's some points that I want to bring out in our dialogue in talking about this. And I had to read the whole uh, two chapters, the context of it, so we can get a better understanding of the, the significance or importance of there's two uh, dichotomies. One is of sin past sins, current sins, or we come out of sin. I want us to think about that. We, we had past sins, we still may have current sins, and, uh, and how are we transitioning out of that? And one of the things that I want to first of all start off with, in seasons, the, there's either sin or no sin. But this third dichotomy I want to add, this past, and if you're not careful, in times of great difficulty, you'll get stuck on the past and you, you get in a rut and you can't transition. Transparency, I'm in that season to where I, I at one point for quite some time, uh, didn't want to transition. I, I, you know, I was talking to a theologian and I was being honest with him and, I, and several theologians. And one of the things that uh, I had to let him know is that, you know, I, I was stuck. Now, I'm going to tell you how I got stuck. I'm going to bring some transparency, transparency to some things. I was, um, you know, uh, married for, uh, married 38 years, and, and uh, I had the person I was married to, 40, 41, knew him for 41 years. And one of the things that, you know, uh, I had to come to the conclusion uh, in 
that institution is this. When you find yourself uh, coming into something where you're one, uh, not prepared, two, uh, your current state doesn't maturate who God is, and you, and then third, you know, these are these are just transparency, You're just trying to teach this because we don't tell the truth. In transitions, and we're not careful, you know, you're going into something with expectations that are not realistic. And so then then uh, in these seasons, as you shift, if you're not careful, you have people who have expectations, but you you weren't prepared for it. your content character wasn't where it should have been. Then this second aspect of life is that you continue to do things as they say, fake it till you make it. And you try to uh, act as if, even though you're in pain and you're not fulfilling your purpose, you will, you will find yourself um, doing the same stuff different day and lying about it. Like, like you just want to act like everything is fine, it's cool, you know, um, I'm okay. And then this third aspect is you, you will, you will then uh, 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 find yourself in these seasons and transition. You're so busy trying to get out of things, the pain that produces purpose. You, be, you, you really are not focused on the real reason of the new season. Like you didn't, you, you, you didn't learn anything. You really just are the same person. This will produce a pain that says, I want to be relieved. And anger and frustration will sit in. And before you know it, you will have missed the dash. You will miss the purpose and intent of why God got you here. Is it really about who's wrong or right in these instances? It's really not. It's really about what did you learn so that you can transition and be transactional and move forward instead of being stuck. So today, uh, Bishop Denham under, he, he talked about this. Am I Moses who got us to a certain space and place and people that and yourself have a disbelief that God did it. And then you get to where you're supposed to go. And, and then you murmur and complain because that pain of these new seasons, this new way of doing business plagues you. And so God has to say, okay, you in this generation will just be stuck. You won't see nothing new. Or you're Joshua and Caleb who is now prepared and says, I'm gonna move forward, that I may be able to fulfill the purpose and intent that God has for me. So this, these are difficulties, even in relationships, you know, even in church, even in the job, we get stuck, even uh, uh, in friendships, we get stuck. So in this transition, we have an opportunity to contemplate. So I'm gonna give you my contemplation. So I'm in this season now, I finally said to myself, I'm not gonna fight it. I'm not gonna fight the transition. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm just gonna be quiet and seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go on about my business and just be quiet. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not giving in to nothing. I'm just not, gonna, I'm not fighting anymore. I'm not fighting what God is trying to do. I'm not, I'm just not going to do nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to find out who God is, who am I, and what lessons in this transition are to be learned and be man enough, or you need to be woman enough to know that, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things I see. I don't know what it's going to look like. And at this point, I've tried that where you live a life trying to see what is what the end gonna be. And really you you're spending energy that is that is 
that is really not, it's counterproductive. I should be focusing on who God is and how do I better myself and that I may help others that as I love God and love people, that I help others to see that we need God and that a transition and transactional exchange can't be out of bitterness or hate or, or hurt. It's gotta be out of the fact, out of love, and kindness, fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, uh, um, you know, that patience, that kind of stuff. Those seasons, those winter moments even, when we're supposed to be hibernating and we're supposed to be finding ourselves, you know, resting and, and preparing ourselves for the next move. Even in those seasons, we have no business in turmoil, in, in a disarray, or find ourselves uh, in, a, in, a, in an environment that's toxic. You, you, no, you should have already, have bears that hibernate, they eat and prepare to sleep. In spiritual talk, we need to, in, in these exchanges, we need to focus more on God and the word of God and find ourselves slowing down and getting enough spiritual calories to be prepared for that hibernation period because that next season out of winter, when spring comes, we ought to be ready to hit it and roll and run. But if you stay stuck on things that have nothing to do with your purpose and intent, and you get stuck in your past, and you're in fear of what God looks like. What does, what do I look like with God in this season that I'm so supposed to be in, and this new season, you're gonna miss out. And there's gonna be some mishaps, and then you're gonna spend more time saying things you have no business saying, or things, you do things that don't amount to anything when it comes to perpetuating who God is. We're supposed to have a new song to God as we move forward. Not the same old song, same old song and dance. So in relationships, this is what we'll do. We'll get stuck on, you know, we, we'll try to be somebody's mother or somebody's father. Or, you know, we'll spend more time trying to degrade or grade each other. When, no, this one, you know, it's time to move on. When God... It should be a new song in your heart for God. Yeah. Isaiah 42 in that 10th verse to that 12th verse. Who was talking about? We ought, we ought to be praising him to the end of the earth. And then you who go down to the sea and that which fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants, let the desert and its towns lift up their voice. You ought to be teaching others who God is. And they should be excited that God has given opportunity in these seasons and we ought to show them what that looked like and then the villages that Kedar inhabits let the inhabitants of, of, of Saleh sing for joy let them shout loudly from the top of the mountains let them give glory to God and declare his praise in the coastlands look in these in these times in these seasons yes we need to be shouting and, and praising God and being thankful for what we have and where we're not be thankful that that faith and substance that word is giving us grace and mercy and an opportunity to make that shift and change and sometimes in that exchange you just got to let it all go just let it go I'm not gonna argue I'm not gonna fuss I'm not gonna cuss I'm not gonna get mad I'm not I ain't got time for all that I tell you what I'm gonna do I'm going to go sit myself down and then I'm going to get God. And when I say get God, like never before, just, you know what, it's, it's a, I, I have nothing to lose. Let it go. Just go. I I, I want to, uh, as they say in the secular, work hard and play hard for God. I just want to, you know, I, even though I may not have gotten it right in the past, I'm, I'm not letting folks keep me stuck. And I don't want to keep the other person stuck or people in my 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 space and place. I really want to be an asset, not a liability. And sometimes to do that, you just got to let it all go and have nothing to lose. But all the gain is God. That's it. And if and if they can't accept that, it's too bad because God got you here. They did. God's going to sustain you. They don't. 
And you, you only God knows the heart of a man and woman. So why even have that argument? There's nothing to argue no more. I just don't care. I tell you what, I, I want to learn more about who God is. So this song of praise moves from the end of the earth inward, from region to region until the whole world is involved. We Again, we should be perpetuating who God is, and then God is renewing everything. But we've got to put the work in, faith and works. If you don't have it, faith without works is dead. And that's what we do. We'll sit there and spend more time not having the faith. Or we'll have the faith and don't have the works. They're hand in hand. I got to put both hands to the plow. And as I'm working, I got to believe God got me. And when you look forward, you ain't got no business looking back. So if you're around somebody and all y'all continue to do is talk about the past, or they keep trying to throw the past up at you, you're wasting your time. Because it's not about what you did. It's about what you learned. And if, and, and if you are not having a dialogue about that, and when I say learn, let me make this clear. Again, transition is about contemplating what's the next chess move? Like, God, what should I be doing? Where should we be going? Not about where I, what I did and how I hurt and all that stuff. And, you know, no, and no, let it go. Just, you know what? I, I can't get it back. I just want God. I just want, I want to move forward, move on. And it's okay. And yes, I may not have been the best person on the planet. You know, I'm not. At that time, I may not have done all that I should have done, but at the end of the day, it's all God. I, I, all I got left is what's left of that dash, and I don't want to waste it. And I really don't care, to be honest with you, you know, if, if you stay there where you are while I'm trying to move on, or vice versa, or both of us should. And, and I'm saying this not just in a marriage, but any relationship. I don't care if it's friends, the church, the, you know, uh, people at the job, your job. I'm saying this. Globally, we, we need to think about that. So the world is moving from a despair, sparing place to a place of order, which is great news. But the great news is not only the joy of renewal, it is also the way that it all comes about. So when we talk about in this place of order, as you seek the first kingdom of God and the rights things of God, what ends up happening is order shifts. Now it's going to be some trash and debris and some hurts that you know you as you reflect you'll say oh man hmm. this trigger enemy he'll say man you jacked that up you should have done this should have done that man this didn't work blah, 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 blah. and then that's 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 the enemy he wants to have you babbling about nothing instead of saying okay i gotta i gotta work my way out i gotta dig it could be it could be psychologically socially physically it could be spiritually <clears throat> it can be educationally it, it could be financially, whatever it is. You, you, didn't, you didn't get there overnight. You didn't get stuck overnight. You didn't mess it up overnight. It took years or, or may have took weeks, months, days, whatever. But you got to understand that in this seeking ye first kingdom of God and the rights thing of God in this new place that you're trying to go to, to get order, that disorder, there has to be some shifting and sifting in order to get you where you need to go. And don't compete with other people in other people's spaces and places. Don't do it. Just don't care. Just like, you know what? As I can't even, I, I'm having problems. Just as, as my older brother, uh, Thomas Earl Keenan, you say he was a pastor and preacher. He say, you can do bad by yourself. I, I got enough stuff. Now, you gone, your, your folks switch it go. I don't care. You, you Sometimes you have to do that to hibernate because you need to be getting some nutrition. You need to be gaining as much word as possible to make that transition and transactional processes and innovation and improvements. Um, now I'm a lean six sigma guy and agile safe and all that stuff. And I teach that stuff. And and you gotta you gotta ask yourself, am I strong enough to to make the move for the new season or the next season, or even transition from one season to the next, or to even be able to hibernate? That's that's the truth. And, and that will not, people won't like that sometimes. They'll, they'll, they'll still be stuck on, well, you know, no, I, I don't know. I, I got to find out who I am in God. I have to find this new place in God. I don't know who I am. I had to tell a couple senior leaders just this other day, and they were bishops, bishops and archbishops, archbishops, and we were talking. 
from a theological and, and leadership perspective. And we were talking about where I am and, you know, and I was, I shocked them and I said, yep, I mean, call the preachers, I've been eight and, you know, I've been preaching in pulpits and musician and all that stuff. I've been doing it for decades. Finally, I got smart in this season. I've been half doing it my whole entire life because what I was doing, I spent more time on trying to influence and make people think when they told me you should be here instead of me being honest and saying, no, I'm not there. And that there's an educational process that comes behind that. There needs to be some process improvement in my life. And, and you are the conduit to get me there. Now let's talk about how we do that. I, I need a edu- I need a spiritual education symposium. I need I need to be honest with you. Jay. I don't understand, and I'm gonna give you some examples. Like it's people that don't understand what the symbols are in a church. They don't even understand when folks preaching. They just nod their heads and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, praise God." You don't even know what they're talking about, or certain theological terms. Or somebody asked me, you know. Uh, what certain symbols that certain uh, senior leaders were. Man, I, you know, did the theological thing. But guess what? You you don't use it, you lose it. So I had to be honest with them and say, well, I don't know. I mean, what, I'm in that season of my life. I'm tired of you telling me what I should be or what I should do or why I didn't do it. I don't care about that. Now I'm an educator and, and I'm a global educator. educator. So now I just tell, I, I use what I do for truth. And I tell people, no, no, I don't know. Or I do know. Now I may know about it, but I haven't done it. These are the things that in transition, we got to be honest about. And then we just got to cut folks off that don't want to hear that. And and that's it. I don't care. Like I, I'm not living like that for the rest of my life. I'm just not going to do it. Just let it go. So God brings war to create order. That's Isaiah 42 and 13. And sometimes he just allows life to carve and craft us to make us move like straight up war and that, and that hate i hate it sometimes i do i ain't gonna lie that's pain producing purpose i'm like that why you got me in this season man and whoa i'm getting roughed up you know <clears throat> now some of you have never probably been in a physical fight before but i have plenty of times gone from the streets and i didn't win them all but it's just the act of having to fight somebody else and it depends on how that fight go man it's whew, rough it could be, again, psychologically. It could be, you know, sociably. It could be alienation, whatever it is. But I have found out that in these seasons, God will say, okay, you don't want to move? I'm going to make you move. And I'm going to tell you how we're going to do that. We're going to do it just like this. And then let it go. Just say, okay, you know what? It's time for me to, uh, I need help. I'm blind. I'm flying blind. You know, pilots, they, the instrument's not working. You got to be honest and say, oh, I'm flying blind. So uh, uh, Isaiah 42 and 16 says he leads the blind. He turns darkness into light. That's 42 and 16. Darkness into light. He does that. God does it. We got to quit trying to be light, bring light, act like you the light. No, you're not. You, you need God to bring the light. What is the truth? God bring pure illumination and transparency in my life. You got that means you gotta, you gotta, you gotta s- 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 uh, decrease so God can increase. In other words, you you have to humble yourself, put yourself in a position where you listen and let God shape and mold you, potter clay, to, to get you to see what is necessary in order for you to become that which you should be. We often want healing and joy to descend on us suddenly. And I'm, I'm in that right now, man, I, I, man, I do. I'm like, I don't like the pain. I don't like this transitioning and transactional stuff. And God's telling me, nope, guess what? I want you to be quiet. Sick the first kindergarten righteous stuff, God. You can't get this back and all that. Just look, it is what it is. It's time to move on. Do, do what i'm requiring of you because if you're still here guess what you have a shot at the t- title called life there's some people didn't get it i, I just as as a chaplain i was visiting uh i got a uh a, a instant message from a person that i used to be in the military with and it was a uh a military person 
you know, senior military person that had a bad accident and is in bad shape and, you know, got me medevaced to a, a specific uh, healthcare facility. And first person came to mind was myself. And, and here I am, I'm crying out to God saying, God help me. And I wasn't feeling well, you know, and, and but God ain't impressed upon me. I tell you what, I want you to go and, and talk to this, this young man. And do you know, it made me realize there's others that are worse off than you. And that I have an, I had an opportunity to, to reflect upon that and realize how blessed I am. And he allow those situations to just remind you, hey, you know, stay focused. But for joy to grow in our lives and in our world, great evils must first be stamped out. Like the gradual return of plants and sunlight in the spring, joy comes during and through God's patient work. And, and, and here's my point. So there's some stuff in our life that you know need to be stamped out. And we have to be honest with ourselves. And don't be spending time on what other people are trying to tell you needs to be stamped out because only God know the heart of a man or a woman. And then at the end of the day, I, you know, it's sometimes I do things and then I'm like, what was that about? And people will try to tell you how you need to fix that or you need to do this or do that. Man, I'm a, I, I finally learned. No, no, because one, you weren't involved in that. Number two, uh, you don't know my heart. I try to express it, explain to you something I don't even know. And then the third thing is, is that what, what it's going to come down to you don't really understand my purpose and intent in my assignment. So if I sit there and let you dictate something that you didn't create right before the framing of the world, God got me here. And it's really God's job through the word. And he'll use, no, no wrong. He'll use people and things and tools and technology to help us to uh, gather information. But ultimately we need the spirit of the Lord to help us to decipher and and to uh, discern what is right. Because uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And and that that if, if you think about that, that the spirit of the Lord and leading God is to that truth. You got to be spirit filled. Well, well, what if I'm not? Well, I'm in a space and place where I'm not. And I'm talking to people all the time that are not subscribing to that. You know, they they want to subscribe to the world or street things or they in and out or right now I'm not feeling God or I don't know. See, when you just keep entangling yourself in conversation and situations with people like that, you're going to lose. So now I learned, be quiet, seek ye first kingdom of God and it's right to things of God and then shut it down. It's time to hibernate, baby. I need, I need some, I'm, I'm, that season is coming. We must embrace the natures of his work and the difficulty of it. And much as we embrace the results, we got to realize, embrace God. What transitions are you in? How can you depend on God in the midst of them? And what are you learning about God in the process? And I want to I want to leave you with this. At the end of the day, who is God in your life? That's it. All the other stuff don't matter. Don't care what they're trying to do to you, what they're saying, what I don't, how you feel about me, all this. No, 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 no. It comes a point of maturity where you got to say, where is God? Who is God? The who, what, where, when, and God. But why? About God. It's all about God. And that is, that's not a cop out. That's truth. Because when it's all said and done, these folks that you've been entangling and battling with, they're not going to be there with you, heaven or hell. No, they're not going to be the one to make that decision. God is.